Uh, born and raised in New York City. Um, yeah, New York. Born in Brooklyn, raised in Jamaica, Queens, which is right by, New York, right by Kennedy Airport. And um, really wonderful musical neighborhood. You know, I had a lot of mentors. You know, the crazy older dudes who would who would give you um, crazy stuff to practice, but it ended up really making you better. Um, I went to Music and Art, which is at Fame High School. Remember Fame, the TV show? I went to that school, except that nobody got to dance on top of taxi cabs. <laughs> I wish you would jump on a taxi driver's cab and start dancing. You get yourself knocked out, right? Um, early on, I got into studio work, and what that means is that um, you're a musician for hire. And what made studio musicians special is that uh, you know, you had great musicians who played really soulfully, who didn't read music that well, and then you had musicians who read music very well, but they didn't really have that soul. And it was, uh, if you could do both, if you could read music and, and make it sound like you weren't reading, that made you really valuable. And we became studio musicians, and we'd play in New York, we'd play on hundreds of records a year. You know, I, I think I ended up playing on maybe 600 records wow. in, my, uh, in my studio career. And uh, it was amazing, you know, you just wake up in the morning and you go and play for Grover Washington Jr. for three hours and Paul Simon for three hours and Roberta Flack, then, you know, uh, David Bowie, uh, Elton John, every day, week to five, and it was, it was an amazing experience. It doesn't really happen that way anymore because, you know, a lot of people make music with computers these days. So that, uh, that, that opportunity for young musicians isn't there, but I was really blessed to be, be part of the end of that scene. Really incredible. Uh, one of the first things First records, first projects that I participated in that got really big uh, stands out for me. It was uh, Grover Washington Jr.'s Wine Light. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, I was still young. I was like 19. So I had a lot of energy and I was trying to impress people. So uh, the bass line would be the bass line and you're supposed to stick with it. But every four bars, I'd put some flavor in there. You know what I mean? So I'd be like... After the first take, the piano player, whose name was Richard T, who was very seasoned, he played with Aretha Franklin and King Curtis, he's really well known. He took me and put me, grabbed my shirt like that, put me up against the wall. He said, look here, first of all, you never play with your eyes closed when you play with me. And second of all, you don't put any of that fancy stuff in there unless I look at you and nod that it's okay first. You got that? And I was like. So we did take two and I was like. And then he'd look at me and I go. <laughs> come on, join in with me, y'all. Come on, join in. Gerald Alright's gonna come back and help me out with this one. 